There's a difference between maximization, limiting, and clipping. However, the definitions get blurred due to how modern limiters are designed and marketed. So, if you've been confused about the differences, or you just need some additional clarification with some visuals to help, I promise that by the end of the video, these three types of processing will make a lot more sense, and you'll know how they differ. That said, let's cover maximization, limiting, and clipping. Starting off, let's look at their basic and biggest differences. Now, just a heads up, you'll likely disagree with what I'm saying at first, but that's because these processing types are usually combined in newer plugins. Now, technically, a limiter is a compressor with a 10 to 1 ratio or higher, and that's about it. It was originally designed for broadcast to make sure the signal didn't exceed a particular level. It doesn't amplify the signal more than what's needed for operation, it doesn't increase quieter details, at least not purposefully, and it doesn't have different algorithms to achieve unique timbres aside from one or two stages of compression. It just turns things down when they cross a threshold. Now, early limiters, and the limiters that we still use today, incorporate look-ahead to observe the incoming signal prior to it being processed. When a peak exceeds the ceiling, it's turned down, it's not clipped or truncated, its amplitude is simply lowered. Now, clearly, this isn't what we think of when we think of limiters. When we think of a limiter, we think of loudness. And this is due to maximization, or the amplification of quieter aspects of the signal. Now, most limiters follow this model. Instead of only attenuating when a signal hits a certain level, limiters allow for the amplification of the signal into the limiter, so to speak. By amplifying the signal while having a cutoff for the peaks, we maximize or increase the quieter aspects of the signal, causing increased detail and a louder sound. So to recap, limiting refers to attenuation of the peaks, not reshaping, but a reduction of amplitude. Maximization refers to the amplification of quieter or lower amplitude signals. This could be achieved with a limiter, but it could also be done with a lot of other processors. Meanwhile, we have another processor that causes maximization, a clipper. Like a limiter that has a maximization function, we can increase the signal's level into the clipper. The difference lies in the treatment of the peaks. Instead of lowering the amplitude of the signal, like a limiter, a clipper reshapes the waveform until it eventually becomes a square wave. So a clipper maximizes, and it causes wave shaping. By shaping a sine wave into a square wave, clippers create odd-ordered harmonics. Now, periodic odd-ordered harmonics play a big role in the aggressive sound of a clipper. Additionally, clippers sound louder, since we're not reducing the peak's amplitude like with a limiter. We retain the amplitude while reshaping the waveform and adding distortion. We'll get into some more detail in just a moment, but let's quickly listen to a mix limited, then the same mix clipped. The amount of maximization, or the amplification of lower levels, will be identical, but the treatment of the peaks will vary. I'll push both pretty aggressively so that the effect is easier to hear. Make mixes that accurately translate what you hear in your head without years of practice or expensive plugins. Seriously though, when people work with us, they get results. That's why major industry professionals like Keith Urban's producer Aaron Schurz works with us, Grammy Award winning AJ Castillo, Billboard number one charted artist Megan Lindsay, Grammy Award winning artist Toulis, The Voice singer Cody Ballou, Grammy nominated producer Tyler Kane, Warner music artist Ricky Young, and the list goes on. Why waste your time creating mixes that look like this when you can instantly fix the problem by working directly with professionals who have already done what you're trying to do? Watch this entire video, and at the end, learn how you can start making mixes that accurately translate what you hear in your head. Next up, let's figure out what other processors can maximize a signal. Although only limiters limit and only clippers clip, at least intentionally, maximization can occur with a lot of different types of processors. For example, a big reason to use parallel compression is to maximize the signal. If I compress the signal, then introduce the dry signal to the output, we'll notice how we achieved maximization, that is, the amplification of quieter details while retaining peaks. In this example, notice that neither limiting nor clipping is occurring. Or say I use the Oxford inflator. Now I'm maximizing through wave shaping, and the peaks are processed with a soft knee clipper. Something similar happens 
with vintage warmer too. The quieter details are amplified, while higher amplitudes are amplified to a lesser extent. If they become high enough in amplitude, the peaks are attenuated. This time though, they retain their shape and they aren't clipped. Now one more example, if I use this M Wave Shaper by Melda Audio, a personal favorite, and it's free if you're looking for a good wave shaper, you'll notice how I'm achieving maximization by very subtly increasing the value of low amplitude signals. Unlike most maximizers, wave shapers could be used more aggressively and creatively. If I amplify the noise floor, I can achieve an incredibly noisy and distorted sound. Or I could lower the higher amplitude values to achieve hard or soft knee compression. Granted, with a higher level of harmonic distortion than most compressors. If we zoom in on a waveform, we'll notice that we can reshape the wave in a multitude of ways. Whereas clippers wave shape primarily by creating square waves, I could use this processor to create sawtooth waves, mimic lower bit depths through stepped waves, and do just about anything I can think of. So this brings us to a clearer definition. Modern limiters maximize, attenuate peaks, and don't wave shape, or at least they're not supposed to. Clippers maximize and wave shape in a very controlled way, meaning they create square waves, an exception being newfangled audio saturate clipper, which includes a detail preservation function that reshapes clipped peaks. Wave shapers can be used to maximize, as we saw, and of course, to reshape the wave in much more complex ways. So although it seems a little convoluted due to some limiters being called maximizers, like Isotopes Maximizer, or some limiters including clipping algorithms like Voxingo's Elephant Limiter, it helps to think about limiting, clipping, and maximizing as three different types of processing that can be combined into a single plugin, instead of three distinct types of processors. So before we go, let's compare maximization caused by parallel compression with maximization caused by a wave shaper. The amount of harmonic distortion and the maximization will occur differently, so you should be able to notice a difference in how they sound. Make mixes that accurately translate what you hear in your head, without years of practice or expensive plugins. Seriously though, when people work with us, they get results. That's why major industry professionals like Keith Urban's producer Aaron Schurz works with us, Grammy award-winning AJ Castillo, Billboard number one charted artist Megan Lindsay, Grammy award-winning artist Tulis, The Voice singer Cody Ballou, Grammy-nominated producer Tyler Kane, Warner Music artist Ricky Young, and the list goes on. Why waste your time creating mixes that look like this when you can instantly fix the problem by clicking the link in the description and working directly with professionals who have already done what you're trying to do. We've helped 2,346 clients make mixes that accurately translate what they hear in their heads without years of practice or expensive plugins, and it'll work for you too. Click the link in the description and get direct access to us for custom analog mastering, one-on-one -on -one mixing feedback, in-depth mixing and mastering courses, and our thriving community. Click the link in the description now to start making mixes that accurately translate what you hear in your head.